Hey everyone, we've had this uh, Bronco Big Ben sitting behind the shop for the last few weeks. We're retrofitting it to an RPM Untamed Edition. We want to get started on it. Fall's coming quick. Uh, we're going to be towing this behind um, the RPM event vehicle. So we're going to fit it with the uh, Blue Ox tow system, some of the best stuff on the market. We're also going to add, a little later on, Mickey Thompson tires, ultra wheels, Rough Country, ton of equipment from Rough Country, Go Rhino, and Anderson Composites. But we're going to get started on it today. We're going to pull it into the detail shop because we don't have room on a hoist. We want to do the Blue Ox equipment first because we want to make sure that no other equipment that we install is in the way of putting the Blue Ox in properly because it will be towed behind a number of different vehicles. So we'll get started. We'll meet you in the shop. Okay, change into work clothes. We're in the detail shop. It's a give and take. We don't have a lift here, but we do have central air, so we're going to really enjoy it because it's a nice hot day out. So we've got all of our Blue Ox stuff uh, sorted, unpacked. Uh, we've got it sorted out on the table here. We've got the complete Blue Ox wiring kit at the back. It is a uh, universal wiring kit, but it's everything we need to do, including the diodes for the taillights to get us up and running, towing our Bronco behind any vehicle whatsoever. We've also got the base plate system here, and we've got the tow bar itself over there. The blue ox tow bar we're using is the baddest of the bad. It's a 10,000 pound tow bar, so we can tow anything from our Bronco Big Ben right up to our RPM F250. What we're gonna focus on today is the actual base plate and the install of the base plate, and then we'll move on to the wiring. So right here, we've got the base plate itself, We've got the mounting brackets, we've got the hardware, we've got the safety cables, and we've got these doodads here, which are amazing. They're uh, fastening nuts with a rod welded to it for hard to reach places. Awesome, awesome tools. So, I personally have towed for over 35 years. I've towed with many different companies' products, but I always come back to Blue Ox, and there's a reason for that. Not only are their tow bar base plates really straightforward to install, and don't take up much underneath the vehicle, but the connection and disconnection to the vehicle itself is very, very easy, very foolproof, and just so safe. So it's this simple. You pull the release tab, you rotate, and it comes out. To put it back in, you don't even have to pull the tab. You simply push it in, rotate it, it's self-locking. It's that simple. So we're going to focus on installing the base plate today, follow along with our install. Okay, I've separated out the uh, Blue Ox base plate only components. We've got our mounting hardware, our bolts, washers, locks and flats, our trick little hard to reach nuts, quick links, plugs, cables, and brackets. Let's get to work. Okay, we're gonna to get to work on installing our Blue Ox tow bar system. We've got a BX2687. It's important to know that because there are two different part numbers for the new Broncos. You see, we've got a standard bumper. The other part number is for the modular bumper. So it's really important that you know what you have and you order the correct part number for the vehicle you have. So just to make sure that I don't get uh, any trash talk or backlash from any of our readers and uh, watchers, I am wearing an RPM shirt. I chose this one today to work on our Big Ben because we might be on our back, but we'll be on some mats, so we'll be good. Okay, we've done the first few steps of the install of our Blue Ox BX2687. Uh, again, we always recommend uh, for stuff like this, a professional installation. If you're not comfortable with hand tools and mechanical, then by all means have it done somewhere else. Uh, if you get these first three or four steps done and you're not comfortable with it, take it to a pro. So again, using basic hand tools, we've got the front end disassembled. Um, I'm just gonna move over here. This is basically what we've got off. We're not gonna go through every single step with you because this instructions are pretty self-explanatory with regards to um, tools you need and what you need to do. So, we, so what we've done in the first few steps of uh, this install is we've removed the skid plate, uh, the tow hooks, the tow hook covers, 
Uh, that leaves our cooler hanging under there, which we'll take care of uh, during the install. Um, tow hooks are not going to be reinstalled. We're not gonna go through every nut and bolt removal because if you're familiar with tools, this is pretty basic stuff and it, the instructions are very good from Blue Ox, so they'll walk you through it. We're just gonna cover the broad basics of it and get on with the install. Okay, so our skid plates came out of here, so did our tow hooks, and this is the cooler I was talking about that's hanging, and we'll address that as the install goes along. So we're gonna drill out the two holes um, beside the tow hooks in front of the tire, and we're just, they're already there, the hole's are already there, one's oblong uh, for adjustability. We're just gonna drill them out a little larger to a half inch. And that one was pretty much already done. What we like to do is we like to grab a little spray paint and just anywhere where we create bare steel. And you're going to do the same on both sides and then we're ready to install the tow bar base plate. So we've mocked up the base plates. The pictures in the instructions are a little bit fuzzy so just to give you an idea of the way they go, we showed that uh, cooler hanging earlier. The base plate actually has an allowance in each side for the cooler rubbers to go through. So it's pretty foolproof when you figure out exactly which side they go on because the bracket with the hole in it for the cooler rubber has to go towards the inside of the vehicle. So we just kind of mocked this up right now. We're gonna get the uh, secondary bracket installed, mocked up, then we're gonna Loctite everything, put the proper lock washers, everything on, and torque it to spec. Okay, so we're wiring the Blue Ox uh, wiring kit for our tow vehicle. Uh, basically involves running a four wire from the front to the back. We've just gone through a grommet in the firewall. Not gonna bore you with the details here. Um, if you're uncomfortable doing it, don't do it. It's just a matter of pulling some trim panels and running the wire. Okay, so we've got our diodes wired in. Basically, we tapped in to find out what was um, tail signal and brake lights. Um, and we've uh, brought our four wire up, grounded it, and we're gonna run our green and brown wire to tap into the other side. Tail lights, brake and signal and have everything working in no time at all. What we're gonna do, we've chosen to, uh, to tap everything inside the body. It's an off-road vehicle. We're, it's gonna be seeing lots of water and so on and so forth. So we're gonna, we've tapped into our wiring for our lights on the inside from the connector on the inside of the body. Then all this will go in, boom, it'll be sealed. All the diodes will be sealed. Everything will be sealed from the elements. So basically we've installed all our diodes, we've tested before we put everything back together to make sure everything was assembled correctly. And uh, we actually had one little difficulty which we fixed, we put a new connector on, we're all good. Uh, interior trim's back together. So we've done the left side already. Basically what you do is just go in reverse of the way you took it apart. Tail light goes on first, the appropriate bolts. Lower trim, side trim, side trim first. Then your final trim panel has three bolts and four push pins. Again, pretty basic stuff. One thing to note when you are taking these trim panels off, uh, they do have some pretty strong clips. They gotta be pulled pretty hard, but you still have to be gentle at the same time. Done a time in my lifetime, everyone goes, oh, I don't like watching you do that, but you know what? Um, they are pretty tough clips. They're reusable for most times. If you break one, you gotta get a new one. So they are a bit tough to get off. If you're not comfortable doing it again, take it to a pro. So they've kind of got a triple protection on here. We've got lock washers, we've got nylock locking nuts, and we've got red thread locker. So a pretty, as permanent as you're gonna get as far as um, holding power and fastening power on the Blue Ox base plate. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna install the right hand side, and then we're gonna put uh, 
all of our remaining parts or skid plate back in place, do a little trimming, and we'll be good to go. Okay, last two bolts are torqued. We're good to go. Um, we're gonna put our trim back on underneath and uh, finish our wiring we got hanging here. And we're all set. All right, we're just installing the skid plate and as the uh, Blue Ox instructions say, skid plate's uh, probably gonna require some trimming to uh, fit with the base plate. You see I've taken my trusty silver marker and we're gonna sneak up on it and just do a little trimming on each side to get that fit flush up right under that front bumper. All right, we've just finished trimming up our base plate. We've also mounted our safety cables to the uh, eyelet provided in the back of the base plate. So we're ready to go finish up our wiring. We've ran it to the front of the vehicle. Our five wire plug is ready to go. We've got a mounting location which we'll show you in a bit and uh, we'll catch up with you once this is all said and done and we're ready to hook up. Okay, we're ready for the final part of our Blue Ox installation videos uh, and that's hooking up the truck to the tow vehicle. Simplest part of the whole process right here. First, park both vehicles on a level surface. Make sure the parking brakes are set. We like to pull ahead about the width, about the length of the tow bar when the arms are compressed. These lock the arms compressed and lock the arms open, these two levers here. Pretty simple though. Stick in these pins, wait for the click, and they're secure. Spread out the arms. You'll notice that these brackets have an up on them. That would mean you put them up. We always connect our pin to the inside, keep it safe. Same thing, up. That means that part goes facing up. When you disconnect your tow bar, it's very important that you're on a level surface. Now we'll get to our safety cables. Pretty basic stuff. lights from the tow vehicle to the vehicle being towed. If we uh, we do have a supplementary brake system on here so at this point we don't have the breakaway switch hooked up yet but uh, we would hook up the breakaway switch to that. So that's all hooked up. Now you'll notice that these arms are not fully open yet. So what we do is we get in the tow vehicle, we do a slight turn to the right, slight turn to the left, and these bars will lock right into place. They'll go click, click. Okay, it's really important. Um, this particular vehicle has a two and a half inch receiver, and we've got it sleeved down to two inch to accept our Blue Ox equipment. And uh, Blue Ox now makes, because that creates a little bit of slack between the sleeve and the main hitch, Blue Ox now makes uh, a single pull hitch immobilizer for different sizes. We're going to be putting that on over the next few days uh, to get rid of that slack in the hitch when you're towing because you want to minimize any type of movement between the hitch because it minimizes wear. 
And that's what this kit is all about. But you can find all this stuff on blueox.com.